Yo, 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 YouTube Nation, welcome back to another video here for Diablo 4. We are back with another guide here, and this will be my last guide for Blizzork in Diablo 4. So, uh, Blizzork, I've made two builds for this, and I would say that they're more based around kind of leveling and uh, kind of early to mid game. Now, this is the end game build. Now, this build does require some gear, but this is the build that I personally have been enjoying a lot. Uh, you know, pushing higher tier nightmare dungeons and just in general uh, blasting with this build. You know, great for farming, uh, great for killing bosses. In general, you can modify it quite a bit as well. It's very versatile. Um, and uh, this is kind of a freeze sork, so it's kind of more based around freezing and proccing a lot of ice shards. So it's kind of a mix between Blizz and ice shard. And this is basically what I landed on after a lot of trial and error. Uh, you know, I've been basically only playing Blizz sork since the game came out, and I've tried lots of different versions. You know, trying with Meteor, trying with Frozen Orb, trying with uh, you know teleport enchantment, uh, with ice spikes, without ice spikes, more burst damage, uh, more survivability, etc. And this is uh, what I feel is all around the best. Um, I have a max uh, roll uh, setup here, a D4 planner, where you can just go in. Uh, it's going to be a link to that in the description. You can just uh, look at the items yourself and copy pasta, you know, everything that you want here. Uh, but you won't have any additional context, you know. But I do have the skill tree set up, the legendaries, the best stats to go for, Paragon board, literally every single thing. You can just copy pasta this and, and you know, start playing. If you don't want to watch the whole video, but I do recommend watching the whole video because you will get that additional insight to how the build actually works. Now, I could sit here all day telling you about how great it is, but I figured I would just show you instead. So I'm in a 68 uh, key right now, and um, I'll show you guys. So against Elite Packs, this is your one shot, essentially. You blink in, you Nova, and you Flame Shield, and you one shot. So that's uh, basically how you're going to be dealing with a lot of these annoying Elite Packs. Now, with regular mobs, uh, the way you kind of deal with those is you're just playing tower defense. You just sit back and spam blizzards and uh, kill them uh, with ice shards. So as soon as you've gotten your blizzards out, uh, what you wanna be doing is send those ice shards. Ice shards is gonna be the way that you recover your mana and it's gonna be the way that you kinda burst down a lot of these enemies. So uh, you're gonna be doing a lot of damage with that spell. Uh, so it is kind of a hybrid here uh, and it's just based around freezing and you can see my mana is constantly going up when I'm using those ice shards. Um, see if we can... Uh, Take down this room here real quick as well, just for fun. Uh, but what I like about this build is that uh, you do get to play it kind of more of a ranged sorcerer. Uh, you're playing a lot of tower defense, basically, where you just sit back and uh, make sure that nothing gets to you. So it's kind of fun for that reason. And uh, obviously the ice spikes, you know, they do a lot of damage. So when you're freezing stuff, those are going to be doing a lot of damage. And when you're freezing stuff, you're also going to be proccing those shields and you are going to be able to multiply your ice shards. So everything just works together with freezing. Um, and you can see here one of those annoying uh, packs with that suppressor shield, but uh, you can just take care of those pretty easily. Uh, and uh, it's a fairly uh, good build. You know, I would say it's uh, very versatile, very viable. Uh, for endgame and you can definitely tweak it a lot to your liking now I will say I'm level 93 so I'm still missing some paragons still missing some HP uh, still missing you know uh, I still haven't done my renowned ground grind <laughs> so I am missing uh, you know a lot of uh, points um, so uh, my character personally could be a lot stronger but um, if you set up your character and you're level 100 especially uh, you set it up the way uh, I've linked here you are uh, definitely going to be a force to be reckoned with. So, without further ado, let's get right into the uh, the juicy stuff. So, uh, I already have a video where I explain why I think these items are the best uh, and why I think these stats are the best. But real quick, this is what I'm going for. Generally speaking, uh, when you're trying to push these higher nightmare dungeons, the mobs are going to be 40 levels, 50 levels even higher than you. So armor really falls off as a stat. Now armor against mobs of the same level as you is going to be the absolute best defensive stat in the game. So if uh, it depends on what kind of content that you're going to be doing, but uh, if you're uh, you know going for more of uh, you know similar level type of content, then uh, by all means try to get some armor on your pieces of gear. If not. Uh, this is what we're doing. 
we're getting maximum life we're getting plus crowd control duration because that's going to allow your freeze to stay up longer and that's going to allow you to proc more ice charge it's going to allow your spikes to get more work done it's just going to make the whole build better um plus life plus mana cooldown reduction always going to be a useful stat as well we've gone with raiment of the infinite that is going to allow you to get that combo that i just showed you with the one shot where you teleport in that's going to proc modifier number one here you can see you deal more damage to stunned uh, immobilized or frozen enemies of course you're going to freeze them as well after you stun them with your teleport that's going to proc another one of these modifiers and then if you immobilize them with that flame shield um, that is going to proc the third one and not only that that's also going to proc your devouring blaze uh, which is this talent right here, uh, gives you 150% critical strike damage bonus against immobilized targets. So uh, these things is what kind of enables you to get those really high crits. I've been able to crit uh, like 7 million uh, with this build. So definitely potential for really high numbers. Um, so yeah, uh, that's going to allow this uh, kind of aspect of control to triple dip uh, and do a lot of work um now for gloves this is universally the best uh for gloves attack speed crit lucky hit and then plus uh ice charge i think these are absolutely insane if you can get those gloves uh now the actual aspect on these gloves is not 100 percent mandatory you could swap the uh critical strike with core skills increases your attack speed you could swap that for the deep freeze um ice spikes legendary um, that'll give you more radius on your ice spikes explosions it won't actually benefit the ice spikes damage uh, but that is another option that you could go for you could even go for more damage when you have a barrier up or something like that as well it's kind of personal preference i really like the attack speed because i am playing with a staff and we'll get into that as well in a minute um, but uh, yeah i think this is super strong because it also procs off of your enchantment so uh, your enchantment is going to be that when you free something you just automatically shoot ice shards on that target um, the longer it says frozen the more ice shards you're going to be shooting it's also going to be giving you mana back and it's also uh, going to be procking this legendary which is going to obviously affect how much blizzard you can spam and how much ice shards that you can actually get out now, in terms of uh, legs, you could go for the double Nova here, or you could go for the armor uh, stacking legendary, also completely fine option. Um, but in terms of stats, uh, like I said, if you're going to be doing these higher nightmare dungeons, damage reduction from distant enemies, damage reduction from close enemies, damage reduction in general, pl and plus life. So you want damage mitigation and life. Um, if you are uh, going to be doing, you know, a little bit uh, closer uh, content to your level, you can by all means also get armor instead of one of those damage reduction stats. Boots, plus skills, mana cost reduction, move speed, nothing too crazy. In terms of weapon, you want vulnerable damage, crit damage, core skill damage, and intelligence. This is the best stat, the best scaling stats uh, for a weapon. And then you want that ice spike legendary on your weapon. Now, if you do find a blizzard ice spike legendary, a quick tip is also to, before you extract the aspect out of the item that you find, you can actually upgrade the item and that will actually upgrade the damage that you get when you, you know, swap it to your weapon. So uh, make sure that you do that. Um, then on your neck, you want the aspect of control. The most important thing here is mana cost reduction and plus ranks of devouring blaze. On rings, you want resource gen, vulnerable damage, crit damage, crit chance, uh, also, Lucky Hit and Life are completely fine stats to have on your ring. I want Ice Shard Legendary. That's going to allow you to get a lot of that mana return. Uh, and it's just going to allow you to clear things faster, do more damage. So this is super important. And, uh, of course, uh, on the ring, you could go Prodigy's Aspect, which is this one right here. Uh, when you use a cooldown, you restore mana. Or you could just use, um, you know, this uh, Ring of the Umbral, uh, which I personally really like because you're freezing the whole screen so you're going to be getting a lot of value on that in terms of your skills you have ice armor you have flame shield frost nova teleport ice shards and blizzard so i got my blizzard on my right click i send two three blizzards and then i just spam ice charge so that's basically the build you want to just cover the whole area in front of you with blizzards and then just spam ice shards really fun firebolt enchantment that is going to allow your ice shards to apply a dot to the target and that is going to allow you to get that devouring blaze modifier I charge enchantment and have you free something you'll be proking ice shards if you're doing really high keys you could also swap this to flame shield enchantment um uh, and then kind of it's a bit cheesy but you can play around the flame shield and that's how you're going to be doing those extremely high keys because everything there one shots you um it's a viable strategy though it works but uh, it will take a while to actually clear the dungeon now let's talk about the skills real quick 
uh, Firebolt, of course, to get that uh, Firebolt enchantment. You need to put two points here just to get to the next node. So it doesn't really matter if you put one point in Frostbolt or two points in Firebolt or one in Enhanced Firebolt. They don't do anything. So just put one point in Firebolt and one point wherever you want. Uh, then get to here. Max Ice Charge. Destructive Ice Charge. Uh, now, I personally like Elemental Dominance because it gives you that extra um, multiplicative damage modifier. So I really like this. But uh, this is kind of personal preference. Um, in terms of your skills, you definitely want to get Flame Shield, Enhanced Flame Shield, Shimmering Flame Shield, uh, and then you want to get Enhanced Teleport. Now, you also want to get Elemental Achievement, just because it's super nice to just reset, uh, you know, your Flame Shield, for example, when you're, you know, fighting a lot of mobs. It can be a lifesaver. Uh, glass Cannon, Multiplicative uh, Damage Modifier, once again, super useful. Uh, Ice Armor, ideally you want to get this from your boots, and also if you want on your neck, you can get plus defensive skills. Uh, and then you won't have to put any point into ice armor as well. Uh, you will have to put it into these though, because you want that mystical Nova and you want that enhanced teleport and you also want the shimmering flame shield. So uh, then here in the conjuring board, uh, you want the lucky hit. Now, if you are playing with a wand instead of a staff, uh, completely fine to do. I prefer the staff because you get a lot more damage with a staff, but with a wand, you get more lucky hit, you get more mana regen, and you have more attack speed. Now, I think you can offset a lot of that with the legendary, and I think attack speed as a stat works a lot better with a staff because it's a slower weapon and you attack faster with it. Uh, so it just ends up being more damage. And also the double dip on your best legendary uh, is a huge damage boost as well as the fact that a staff compared to a wand and an offhand of the same item level, a staff just does more damage. So... Personally, I am a big fan of staff for those reasons, but a lot of people do like the wand and the offhand. Nothing wrong with that. But if you do play with wand and offhand, you don't want precision magic because the wand gives you that um, lucky hit chance anyway. Uh, so you can kind of free up some talents here and get creative with those. Um, now you can go for mana shield, align the elements. And I do like to have one point at least in protection, especially because at the start of when you're fighting a pack, um, when you pop that ice barrier, if it breaks before you start getting going with your damage, before they start getting frozen, uh, your ice barrier will just not do anything and you won't benefit from that 5% of your damage dealt gets added to that barrier. So this kind of offsets that. So that's why I've put a point here. Um, now, I've skipped cold front because this is percentage based of your current chill. So this, uh, this is not plus 8% chill. This is, uh, it has that multiplicative uh, stat on it, which means that it's 24% of 18% of a full duration blizzard. Now, some of you guys are going to also ask me about why I don't have mage blizzard uh, or why I don't have improved blizzard here. And the reason why is because this actually nerfs your lucky hit chance on your blizzard because your lucky hit chance is based on the full duration of a blizzard. So your lucky hit chance, as far as I know, gets nerfed with mage blizzard and you don't really need it anyway. Uh, so I think mage blizzard is a little bit overkill and you can save up some talent points there to use elsewhere. Now I have maxed out Icy Veil and that is because of, uh, you know, um, Icefall in the Paragon board. Uh, this is really nice, works really well with that. And I'll talk about that a little bit later when we talk about the Paragon. Uh, but for now we got Inner Flames and, the, and that's just to access the Viring Blaze and then we max out the Viring Blaze. That's gonna give us that uh, crit damage modifier that we want. Ice Charge and Ice Charge uh, from the enchantment are going to be proccing the Firebolt, the Dot, and that's going to just give us a passive 60% crit damage bonus. Uh, and if we also go for the one shot, that's going to, you know, triple, almost triple. Um, here, you max out everything. This is just more damage, more damage, uh, more damage, and this is... Uh, pretty much your bread and butter and reason why lucky hit is also so good or one of the reasons why it's so good um so this is going to be super important to have to actually recover a lot of that mana uh, and i know a lot of people ask me you know how do you not go oom when you don't have a base skill and this is the reason you apply vulnerability with ice charge you have a stack of mobs you're going to be proking avalanche as well which is your key passive and that is going to allow you to get a lot more damage out. And that's going to allow you to also regen a lot of mana because you're going to be applying that uh, vulnerability with the ice charge. And uh, with your lucky hit being so high, you're going to be able to consistently proc this um, in addition to having, you know, that resource gen on your rings. You're going to have that mana cost reduction on everything. And all of it kind of just works together to a point where you just become like a little energizer bunny mana battery. Um, now, if you are playing with wand and offhand, I would say that you can swap out of avalanche and actually go for shatter. 
Uh, personally, I really like Avalanche, um, but you can go with Shatter as well. The reason why I don't like Shatter is because I feel like I haven't 100% tested this, but I do think that if something is frozen and you have a Blizzard down and it gets instantly refrozen again, I don't actually think that the Shatter damage triggers. Uh, at least I haven't noticed that. Uh, I could be wrong about that. You guys could let me know in the comments if you know about that as well. But yeah, that's a rough draft of the skills. There's a, com a couple of things that you can swap around depending on your preference. Uh, so it's not 100% set in stone, but this is what I like. Paragon board, um, since there's going to be a link to this, I'm not going to go through every single node. But basically what I've gone for is some of these uh, plus life nodes. I've gone for, you know, all of these extra damage nodes. And let's just talk about the glyphs because those are the most important. Uh, I've gone with a glyph of control in the first board. Second board, I've gone with the Frigid Faith board and the Enchanter Glyph. You can get 70 int on uh, this glyph. It benefits from, you know, intelligence in this red circle. So I've gone for that. Then I've gone immediately for that next board. I haven't gone for any of this additional stuff. Now, in the next board, there's two versions of this build. One of them uses Icefall, which is the one that uh, I'm showing you right now. But one of them uh, doesn't use Icefall because in higher keys, Icefall doesn't really save you uh, when you're doing like a 90 plus key. Uh, every single thing in a game one shots you so the only thing that can save you is flame shield enchantment and then you can just dump this uh, and try to get an extra board uh, and get some more damage by having another glyph so i've gone for ice fall i'd recommend ice fall in general but if you're specifically going for those really high keys uh, you can opt out of this get ice fall get uh, the glyph here i've gone for imbiber and then I've gone to the next board, which is the Burning Instinct board with the Destruction Glyph. Uh, now, this is a great board for, um, uh, you know, any Dex-based Glyph. You could also swap this Destruction Glyph and put it where Control is and then put your Control uh, in place of Destruction as well. It's not a bad option here, uh, but I do think Destruction actually scales better than Controlled uh, because it's crit damage. Uh, so I think this is better, actually. You should just keep it like this. Um, go for these uh, damage reduction from burning enemies just because you're on your way and picking these up anyway like when you're going for the glyph you need the dex here anyway uh, to activate the glyph so you may as well get these while you're there um, and then I've gone ahead and taken these burn damage to burning enemies uh, just because you just get more damage also if you have you could actually min max this board a little bit different here to get yeah we could actually do this Right there. Oh, that activates that glyph. Nice. Uh, it activates another 10% randomly. <laughs> so why not? Um, in the next board, we have gone for the Enchantment Master and Frostbite. And we have gone for this uh, board up here. Extra life, extra damage. Uh, and then we've gone for the glyph. Picked up all the will points, uh, will willpower points uh, in range. And then we've gone for that last board, which is that Static Surge Exploit board. Now, Exploit's really good glyph. Uh, benefits damage to Vulnerable, which is uh, one of the best modifiers that you can have on your character. Uh, and it also gives you that multiplicative damage to uh, Vulnerable enemies. So, super useful glyph. Super useful uh, board in general. Uh, this will give you damage to stunned enemies when you activate your TP chest. So this is going to give you a little bit more one-shot uh, and it's also going to give you a little bit more maximum mana here to work with. So that is the board. That is the build. And uh, there's going to be a link to this, like I said, in the description. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the guide. Uh, if you do, uh, leave a comment. Let me know how your Blizz Sorks are going. If you guys have any questions that I missed, uh, I'll try to answer them there. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys on the next video. Have a good one. Peace.